Hello and welcome. Uh, this is the last and final week of this course and uh, I'll tell you at the beginning what are we going to uh, look at in this week. So, we'll look at uh, various applications of uh, lasers. For example, application of lasers in chemistry which is a big and wide field, uh, laser induced chemistry, uh, you know, uh, the application of laser in medical sciences, uh, in treating device, you know, different types of uh, diseases. We will also learn the applications of uh, laser in uh, material science and uh, metallurgy and also we will learn about uh, uh, the role of lasers in optical communications and uh, you know one last thing that we will look at uh, which is extremely important to learn is about laser safety and with that we will conclude this course. So, uh, let us start uh, today's lesson with uh, uh, applications of lasers in chemistry. So, the first thing that we will look at uh, uh, under this topic is the laser induced chemistry. So, now the chemistry that is uh, induced by the optical excitation is uh, by definition called photochemistry. And uh, the laser induced chemistry also then fall in under of this uh, you know uh, topic photochemistry and this is controlled by all the principle of photochemistry. Now, uh, although lasers can replace any other conventional light source in uh, any, any conventional photochemistry, uh, there are certain uh, you know number of uh, photochemical processes uh, which are not possible to induce uh, get induced by conventional light sources and without the application of laser it is not possible to get those you know photochemical processes or those applications. Now, uh, what are the main characteristics of laser that you know uh, is utilized in uh, laser induced chemistry? Uh, one of course is the monochromaticity of laser. Uh, <clears throat> so, why this uh, particular property of laser uh, is so important? Because uh, using the monochromatic light from laser, one can selectively excite any particular site of interest uh, within any uh, heterogeneous uh, system or any you know specific chemical species when you have a mixture of reactants and thereby you can initiate any photochemical reaction. Uh, second thing is that uh, the laser uh, is, uh, is a provider of very high intensity light. So, uh, this high intensity of laser light uh, is significant both for increasing excitation efficiency and also for thereby promoting multi photon process. We will as we progress today, uh, we will see how this multi photon process is important in, uh, in the field of you know chemistry. Now, um, you know the laser excitation source can be anything, uh, but particularly pulse laser excitation offers a temporal selectivity that is uh, nowadays being widely used uh, or they are you know exploited for inducing and monitoring fast and ultra fast reactions or ultra fast reaction dynamics. And this is extremely important in the field of chemistry where you know bond making and bond breaking uh, needs to be understood very very clearly. So, um, this uh, you know monitoring ultra fast reactions or dynamics of chemical bonding. Uh, is a totally new domain uh, in the field of scientific research and this is known as ultra fast sciences and this has been revolutionized by uh, the invention of uh, ultra short pulse lasers. Uh, 
So, we will look into this particular part in a bit of detail toward the end of uh, this class or maybe uh, early in the next class. So now, uh, whatever we said so far, if we can sum up uh, like you know what are the characteristics of laser lights and what are the uh, you know applications, then uh, we can have a chart like this as is shown on your screen. So, uh, because the laser has a very narrow bandwidth or narrow line width, uh, it can you know really uh, be applied to do high resolution spectroscopy, meaning that you can really selectively use, uh, uh, selectively excite one particular uh, you know, state and thereby uh, you can you know use this property to develop tools to you know or develop analytical tools to be precise to separate different molecular entities, different isotopes and also you can access various different excited state. So, you can really achieve so called the specificity because the laser light has high you know uh, monochromaticity. Okay. Now, uh, you can also you know uh, utilize the you know different uh, laser pulse widths uh, from continuous to uh, you know short pulse to ultra short pulse and then you can really study uh, various different uh, you know chemical processes going on in a short to ultra short time scale and uh, you know you can also uh, be very selective about uh, a specific excitation in a, a complex uh, molecular structure or even a complex environment. So, uh, you can see that you know properties of uh, laser uh, can really be useful. So, uh, you know another important thing is that it can you know uh, send the light to a specific point even you have like a complex environment say like you know within a, you know tissue you can use the you know property of uh, the laser light that is it has a uh, you know larger skin depth. So, the beam can be delivered to a remote uh, to a you know uh, uh, within a you know tissue uh, in our body which is uh, you know beneath our skin okay by quite uh, uh, you know a millimeter or centimeter uh, distance. So, you can even then you know go and excite certain targets within the tissue. Now, uh, these are the general features that uh, you know uh, the laser excitation uh, generally has. Now, apart from these I uh, will mention uh, a couple of points here which is of tremendous importance that is uh, uh, normally in chemistry we use pulsed laser. Uh, for our for achieving any particular purpose and since this input radiation is commonly pulsed and uh, it has a time variable intensity this is true for any pulsed uh, light and uh, since both saturation as well as multi photon absorption may further complicate the dynamics of photo absorption uh, it is no longer you know appropriate to use Lambert Beer's law. So, normal absorption processes uh, we deal with uh, we use Lambert Beer's law to understand that, but here we may have a complicated situation uh, like multi photon absorption or the saturation which no longer you know uh, falls within the limit of Lambert Beer's law. So, we should be very very careful uh, in applying Lambert Beer's law when we are applying lasers to achieve any chemical uh, chem uh, reaction or to probe any chemical process uh, by laser. Now, uh, uh, specifically we have mentioned here the you know absorbance of the optical density which is uh, defined through obvious uh, generalization as uh, A equals to minus log base 10 1 minus F where F is the fraction of energy absorbed. So, one can then you know gauge the uh, often complex dependence on a multitude of factors such as laser frequency, laser fluence or the energy density of the radiation, the pulse duration, optical pulse length, temperature and the concentration of the 
concentration or the pressure of both absorbing and non absorbing species. So, these are the few things that we should keep in mind. Now, let us look into the detail of uh, certain laser initiated processes. So, uh, to start with uh, if we look into a polyatomic molecule, the initial photo induced transition to an electronic excited state is almost inevitably uh, followed by some degree of intermolecular relaxation before any chemistry can takes place, okay, which is easily understandable. A molecule will a polyatomic molecule have several you know bands. Now, if I excite it, then there are several vibrational degrees of freedoms and this energy uh, that the excited molecule has. Now, it can redistribute that energy into different vibrational degrees of freedom that is channelized into different different uh, you know bonds. Now, uh, this what we were talking about is about uh, you know unimolecular process that I take a molecule and excite with the photon. I am not considering a molecule, another separate molecule, and colliding, which is the prerequisite in most of the reactions. Okay, that we uh, you know encounter most of the time, which are like bimolecular reactions, and they are preceded by collision. Here we are just thinking about one molecule and bringing in my laser light, exciting it, and then you know look for the you know chemistry to take place. Now, uh, uh, as I said that uh, before that chemistry can take place there may be relaxation. So, this uh, relaxation is you know essentially it uh, consists of redistribution of energy uh, in different vibrational degrees of freedom or vibrational states in other words. Uh, and this happens typically in the order of picoseconds. The electronic state that we directly populate by uh, laser. Uh, they can, uh, they may not be of tremendous uh, significance uh, or you know quote unquote chemical significance because they may undergo relaxation. So, the initial absorption may not really do something and this relaxation they may also lead to dissociation or ionization or even isomerization. They of course, lead to chemical reactions. Now, uh, if we take uh, an example of a polyatomic molecule given as A, B, C, then one can have a photo absorption that is you give photon from the laser to this molecule A, B, C and A, B, C goes to the electronically excited state which is given by A, B, C star. And then you can also have another process which is known as auto ionization. So, that will create a positively charged A, B, C and expulsion of an electron. The next process that we can have is an isomerization. So, if you have say you know uh, uh, the molecule as A B C star that is after excitation, you have the excited A B C that is A B C star, it can undergo isomerization to form like A C B. So, we know that isomer did not differ in terms of their uh, overall composition right they remain intact but there are some changes so there may be several different types of isomerization so this is one of such example where after the initial photo excitation one can have isomerization and uh, lastly one can have a photo dissociation where the excited state molecule will break into two fragments so ab and c so you know all this you know processes all this consideration that we just showed uh, they essentially apply to unimolecular reactions and laser can, but laser can be also used to induce bimolecular reaction in which either one or both of the reactants are initially excited. Okay. So, as I was saying just few minutes back that you can have you know a couple of molecules they collide each other and then that in, uh, you know results to a reaction. So, here uh, you know so far we have been talking about taking one molecule excited it and then uh, you know that will lead to certain reaction bond breaking or you know isomerization uh, ionization like that. But I can also have like instead of one molecule I have two molecules and I excite one of them to excited state or both of them and in the excited state they can you know react and produce a desired product. So, um, in principle, a wide range of reaction condition can be obtained by promoting each reactant to various energy levels. 
okay, which is quite understandable. If you remember uh, the you know last class where we talked about the isotopic uh, separation, we use something similar. So we excite to a selective level, and from there we ionize. So uh, a bimolecular reaction also, uh, which uh, essentially takes place in a you know mixture of uh, molecules. There we can you know use monochromatic radiations from laser and selectively excite the electronic states or vibrational states of you know each and every molecule and then allow a specific reaction to proceed. One important point here that uh, you know many of these photochemical applications of laser involve the usage of infrared lasers over ultraviolet and visible laser. Why? Because most of the cases uh, what you uh, you know may achieve when you use UV or visible laser is that they will lead to electronic excitation and this electronic excitation depending on the frequency of the laser and depending on the molecular state distribution, you can actually end up getting a dissociation or a photoionization which may not give you the desired product as you would otherwise expect uh, to happen if you are looking at a bimolecular uh, uh, reaction induced by laser. So, instead of using electronic excitation, you do a vibrational uh, excitation by using infrared pulses and uh, this you know selective excitation to different vibration level can give you the desired selectivity uh, toward the end product. And moreover, there is something very important uh, about this infrared laser is that using infrared laser you can achieve multi-photon absorption, which we will be talking about in the next slide. So, as we have written here that uh, a very distinctive kind of uh, laser photochemistry can be induced by powerful infrared sources, the carbon dioxide laser being the uh, most widely used uh, uh, laser for this purpose. And this multi-photon process which can be induced by uh, this strong uh, laser light can become particularly efficient if one or more resonance conditions can be satisfied by the molecular energy levels. This is again you will be uh, you know uh, able to relate to the previous class where we use uh, you know instead of uh, single uh, frequency sources, we took two frequency sources. Uh, and then achieved an absorption between the ground state and the first excited state and then using the second frequency we achieved the desired ionization. So, this preceding you know resonance resonant transition helps in achieving the desired chemical reaction. Now, this vibrational energy levels which can be uh, populated by infrared laser excitation these vibrational energy levels are more or less equally spaced at least at the beginning of the well. So, if you look at the potential well diagram for any particular bond, you will see the vibrational energy levels. So, when you are considering anharmonicity that is the real condition, then of course, the vibration levels uh, they will uh, be close spaced as you move upward in energy. They are not equi spaced, but at the lower part of this uh, you know potential energy well, the vibrational states can be uh, safely assumed to be more or less equispaced. So, you know gap between two uh, successive vibrational energy levels are more or less equal, though actually they are they are shorter as you move upward. Okay. So, um, as long as this gap is uh, pretty much like uh, you know equal. Uh, you can uh, have a situation where the infrared radiation of a particular appropriate wavelength, you can achieve multi-photon absorption and this can be very, very efficient. How? Because if you have a pretty similar energy uh, gap between successive vibrational energy levels, you definitely have uh, some width of the laser pulse. So, this you know they have a central frequency and then the, you have certain width. So, you know there is a frequency spread. Now, this energy gaps you know say like you know between V equals to 
0 to v is equal to 1, v is equal to 1 to v is equal to 2, v is equal to 2 to v is equal to 3 and so on. If these energy gaps are not differing by too much, then that you know slight difference falls within the bandwidth of the laser. Therefore, you can actually keep on exciting a molecule from 0 to 1, 1 to 2, 2 to 3. So, you can have essentially multi photon excitation. Uh, in order to consider this multi photon infrared absorption uh, in more detail, let us first take uh, the simple case of a diatomic molecule where there is only one vibrational frequency, right. So, uh, if you know about uh, uh, vibrational degrees of freedom and other uh, degrees of freedom like you know rotational and translational, then you can easily calculate a diatomic molecule there is only one vibrational degrees of freedom. So, you have a only one vibrational frequency that is a stretching frequency. So, in that case uh, you know explaining things will be lot more easier and for you also it will be easier to understand. So, the first thing that we should note here that uh, as we move up the ladder the vibrational uh, energy states, although the spacing between the adjacent levels starts off fairly constant that is at the lower part of the level, but as you go further this you know gap becomes shorter and shorter and shorter and then it reaches a continuum ok. And this happens at quite faster rate as you increase in the energy within the potential well. It also has to be you know borne in mind that uh, each vibrational state has its own manifold of much more closely spaced rotational levels. We have talked about that in you know last few classes whenever it uh, you know uh, came into the picture. So, the vibrational levels have also the rotational levels within. Now, uh, you know in a real potential uh, scenario you have a an enharmonic oscillator model and you have a dissociative level at some point of time and this is the asymptotic limit and this and assisted as you approach this asymptotic limit uh, there is no restoring force and uh, the molecule essentially get dissociated. So, that is the dissociation limit ok. Now, the process of multi photon absorption displays different characteristics at different region of this uh, uh, you know potential well. So, uh, they are also you know described by different different uh, you know regions. So, like you know first region, second region, third region as shown in this picture on your screen. So, you know up to this point this is uh, region 1, then you have this part region 2 and above dissociation level is region 3. And uh, each of these regions uh, you know uh, uh, we should discuss a little bit more in detail. So, in the region 1 the vibrational levels are quite widely spaced as I discussed already and the spacing is greater than the overall absorption bandwidth ok. So, you know you have sufficient gap between two levels and your laser frequency bandwidth is much much narrower than this gap ok. But it can the bandwidth can be such that the gap between this and the gap between the next two levels those two values if you subtract one from other then that difference may be comparable to your laser bandwidth ok. And that is why you can have multi photon absorption. Uh, <coughs> Now, the uh, this spacing between the vibrational levels uh, is non uniform, but uh, <coughs> the photon energy soon gets out of step and you can have multi photon absorption which we just explained. And uh, you know looking at the diagram here uh, you have uh, different different uh, level v is equal to 0, 2, 1, 2, 3 and so on. So, uh, you know the transition from V is equal to 0 to 1 or 1 to 2, 2 to 3, 3 to 4 all require energies close to that of a single photon ok. That is what exactly I said and uh, it lying it, it lies within the overall bandwidth we have already stated that. Now, therefore, this transitions uh, all of them take place by the process of single photon absorption and 
you can keep on populating one after another. So, this is equal to 0 to 1, 1 to 2, 2 to 3 and so on. So, that is exactly the multiphoton absorption. Okay. Uh, now, it cannot keep on going further. So, the excitation can proceed up to b equals to 10. Okay. Uh, now, um, if you have to have actually multiphoton process going on, that is 0 to 1, 1 to 2, 2 to 3 and so on simultaneously, uh, you need a lot more flux of photon. That means, you need really intense laser light, which generally comes from the pulsed laser light. Okay. So, this multiphoton processes in order to you know happen, you need a pulsed light source. And uh, most often, this is you know taken from mode lock uh, you know laser pulses, which are highly intensed. In the region 2, this is characterized by uh, quasi quantum uh, behavior, which results from the fact that vibrational energy level spacing has become less than the laser bandwidth. Okay. So, here successive photons can be absorbed in a series of uh, energetically allowed single photon transition, but that does not mean much because that almost uh, that energy spacing is almost like a continuum. Now, since the energy conservation is satisfied at every step, molecule can at each point exist for a finite lifetime true for any transition before absorbing the next photon. Hence, the excitation through this region does not necessitate the enormously large photon flux, which might at first may seem necessary. So, this is you know quite different from the region excitation at region 1, which is clear. And finally, once the level of excitation has reached the dissociation threshold, a true energy level continuum is encountered. So, so far we were talking about the like quasi continuum, uh, because uh, the energy space between the two successive levels at a very high energy level of the potential energy diagram was very, very small and uh, you know that this you know difference was within the laser bandwidth. So, it is like almost like a quantum uh, continuum, but not, uh, not a completely continuum, but the true continuum will you know be there once you reach the you know dissociation threshold at that region. And uh, here, uh, the photons can be absorbed in the short time before the atoms separate. And this is known as region 3 behavior. So, there it is when it reaches the dissociative level that is right here, if the photon is here, it has reached here. So, if it goes in this direction, it will be dissociated because this axis is my internuclear distance. So, if it goes far apart when there is no interaction between those two, they are broken. So, once it reaches here, then I can actually bring in my short pulses and we can you know take snapshot at different different positions and then I can actually find out the overall dynamics. I can take the snapshots at different different places and overall I can prepare a movie how the molecule is being dissociated. Okay, we will discuss about that. Now, uh, let us move on to uh, the laser uh, photochemical processes, where uh, we will first uh, talk about the unimolecular laser induced reactions. So, the largest number of laser induced chemical reactions fall into this category. Uh, and uh, the carbon dioxide laser is uh, mostly used laser here, uh, particularly in the range of like 10.6 micron or 9.6 micron uh, wavelengths. Now, the simplest type of unimolecular reaction is isomerization. And uh, a lot of studies on this photoisomerization has uh, already been done and it has shown that uh, you know how laser induced photoisomerization can modify the relative proportion of different isomers in a mixture. Okay. One example you have seen in you know the last class. And the selective laser excitation of one isomer using a wavelength which no other isomer appreciably absorbs 
can substantially modify the relative proportion either toward or truly in some cases away from equilibrium. Now, let us uh, look at uh, you know some examples. Uh, so, say 1, 2 dichloroethene, uh, where the cis isomer is more stable than the trans isomer uh, by approximately 2 kilojoule per mole. Uh, now, if you irradiate it by a pulse lasers, uh, when you have a mixture of the cis and trans uh, dichloroethene, uh, if you come with a 980.9 centimeter inverse laser light, uh, which actually falls in the infrared region, and uh, you uh, you hit it, uh, hit the mixture which contains more trans compound uh, that results in the conversion of uh, you know predominantly cis isomer. The pulsed irradiation of hexa fluorocyclobutene at 949.5 centimeter inverse, however, results up to 60 percent conversion to its isomer hexa fluoro 13 butadiene which is thermodynamically less stable by 50 kilojoule per mole. And uh, that is given here. And we will uh, you know stop today uh, uh, by uh, stating one classic case of laser induced chemistry that involves the conversion of uh, 7 dehydrocholesterol to pre vitamin D3 which is one again an isomerization reaction. And once this isomerization takes place to pre vitamin D3, that can very easily gets converted into vitamin D3, which is very useful for our body. So, we will stop here today and we will come with more in the following class. Thank you very much.